What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an add-on that makes it easy to quickly add trees and vegetation inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Botanique is a tree and grass add-on for Blender. And so this add-on contains a great library of different trees as well as shrubs and rocks and it's it's just got a little bit of everything that you can use in order to populate landscapes inside of blender so i will link to that in the notes down below you can download that from the blender market um right here um note that there is a light version and a full version so the full version contains the complete library um the light version contains less objects but it does have an object library if you want to go for that lighter version and so let's talk a little bit about how to use it when you download it. So you install that through your preferences using the install function and um, the way that it works is once you've installed it you get this window off to the right hand side and there's a number of different options in here for adding things to your models. So for example let's see where to click on this spawn asset right here. This is going to pop up a window that allows us to search the Botanique library. And so there's a drop down giving us all these different options in here of different things that are contained inside of the library. So you can see how there's garden objects in here, there's grass objects in here, so you can spread grass, um, as well as things like rocks and saplings, um, there's different vines. It's, it's really a pretty good library of different things that you can bring in. But then once you decide that you wanna bring something in, so let's say we wanted to bring in a tree, for example, um, you click on this button right here. Notice how there are options up here for different seasons. So um, what that means is that means you can bring in different trees for different seasons. So for example, let's say I was to bring in this maple in fall like this. So we're going to click in order to bring this in and let's go ahead and drop our 3D cursor out here somewhere because that's going to be a pretty big tree. But we're going to click on spawn, we're going to select this, and then we're going to click on the button for OK. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring this model in to your rendering. And if you zoom in, notice that this is a very detailed tree, so it looks really good. There's a lot of detail in here. Um, do note that if you um, scatter a whole bunch of these in a scene, that will slow down your performance just due to the amount of geometry in the scene. But you can see how we've placed this tree right here. And then let's say that we wanted the same tree, but with the winter option. Well, you just click right here in order to bring that in. And that's going to bring in the winter option of the tree. And notice how that's going to look different, right? That's going to fit in perfectly in a winter scene. So the tree has a little bit of snow on it. Um, so you can use the different seasons in order to create different kinds of scenes inside of Blender. And again, just to note, there are other things you can bring in as well. So for example, let's say we wanted to bring in a rock. So we can click on our rocks right here. We can click in here in order to bring that in. And so they have larger and smaller rocks. But again, if you zoom in on them, you can see how they're very detailed. So they look really good when you render them. Another example is let's say we wanted to bring in one of these pergola structures. You could just select it, click on OK in order to bring that in. And so when you do that, notice that this gives you the option to spawn that either into the Botanique collection. So it's just going to have a collection in here for all of those different plants. Or if you uncheck that, it'll just spawn these into whatever collection you have selected when you, uh, when you activate this tool. Um, there's an option here for wind, which was added in the newest version. I'll come back and talk about that in a minute. Um, for right now, I want to take a look at the scatter assets function. So one of the cool things about this is you don't have to bring all of these things in just one by one. And so let's say you wanted to scatter some plants on this face. So what you can do is you can select the face, then click on the button for scatter assets. And so then you would just click on this plus button right here. And that's going to give you an option to open up some of these presets. And so if you click in this drop down, notice that there's presets for grass, weeds, lily pads, and vines. And so let's say we wanted to add, maybe not grass, but maybe we wanted to add like flowers or something like that. Well, notice how there's options in here for all of those things. Well, if I click on the with flowers, for example, and I click on OK, what that's going to do is that's going to use a particle system in order to place the flowers in my scene. So there's other options in here as well. So let's say we wanted more of a standard grass, for example. We'll go with the cut striped, click on OK. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add that grass in here. And you can actually adjust how many pieces of grass are in here using the particle settings 
right here. You do need to be a little bit careful, again, because you are generating a lot of geometry, but notice how this is very detailed grass. And if you zoom out, you can kind of see, and you can see it a lot better um, if this is bigger. So if I was to take this whole thing, make it a little bit bigger, notice how when I fill this in, I'm getting the stripes from my grass in this scene. So it is a little bit heavy, but that's because it is really detailed. So we can render out. When you render it out, it's gonna look really good. Um, but there's also options in here to adjust like the randomness of your scale so that your grass isn't all the same size. So you can use these sliders in order to do that down below. And so not only can you scatter these preset groups that are contained inside of the library, so you can also scatter a new group like this one so we can come in here and we can just click on new and click on okay. That's gonna create a new particle system right here, but then you can add objects to this particle system. So you can do that by scrolling down to the object setting right here, and you can add objects. So for example, let's say again, you know what, let's go with maybe some weeds or something like that. So we're gonna click in here and let's say we're gonna add some clover to this. We just click in here, click on okay, and then that's gonna drop the clover in here. And again, this is editable just like the other particle system. So I can bring the number of clovers down in my scene really quickly as well. So you can see how adding this is really quick inside of this program. Um, another thing that's pretty cool that you can do with this is you can also use weight paint. So let's say for example, that I had a mesh. So let's say I had a mesh like this one. So it's got some up and down to it, other things like that. So it's got some up and down to it. So if I was to come in here and scatter, um, let's say that we wanted, we'll call it the Alpine Meadow. So we're gonna click on okay. We're gonna scatter that on this surface. So notice how when you do that, you're getting a large number of objects in the scene. But then let's say that we didn't want these over on this side of our scene. Well, there's an option here for weight paint that you can use in order to paint this out so that your plants are only going to show up where your paint has gone. So you can use this to get really fine control of where your plants go. Notice that you do need some geometric detail um, in your meshes in order for this to work. But notice how now I can have plants on this upper area, but not this lower area. And then let's say we wanted to remove some more of this. We could set our weight paint to zero and we could paint this back out like this and push our plants back. So there's also an option over here to draw a vine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click off of this and I'm gonna click on this surface right here. And if you click on the button for scatter assets, you can actually use grease pencil to draw in a vine on this surface. So let's say that we wanted to draw a vine on the surface like this, you can draw where this is gonna go and then you can select one of these options. So in this case, I'm gonna select the option for basic. I'll go ahead and check the box for grow from bottom and I'm gonna click on the button for convert. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this edge or this uh, line that we drew and it's gonna generate a vine based on that. And again, notice how we can adjust this so that the leaves are heavier or lighter depending on what we select. And so there's also a new function that was added in version 6.3, which is the animated trees function, which we kind of skipped over before, but let's go ahead and talk about it now. So what I wanna do is bring my 3D cursor over here and we're gonna add another tree. So we're gonna click on spawn asset. Let's add a deciduous tree. Um, let's go with one of these maples, or actually let's go with this big chestnut tree. So we're gonna add this right here. And so what you can do in this version is there's a button in here for convert to editable. And so if you convert this to editable, first of all, that's gonna make it so you can actually edit the things inside of the tree, but it's going to make your performance a lot slower. But notice how I can actually come in here and I can adjust the different vertices of these objects when I do that. Um, so don't do that unless you absolutely need to. But if we convert this to editable, I'm gonna click on the button for add animation. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add a wind animation to this tree. And it's gonna run a little bit slow when we do this, but notice how when we do this, this tree is moving around like this. So it's like it's in the wind. And so there's a great example on their Blender Market page of what is possible with these settings 
inside of this add-on. So if you want to check that out a little bit more, go check out the, uh, the, the win stuff that's shown on that page to see what you can do with those win settings because it's really easy to use and it can really add that extra bit of life to your renderings when you're doing uh, landscapes and natural areas, things like that. All right, and then finally, there's a couple other options over here I want to talk about. So I'm going to remove that wind animation. I'm going to delete the tree. And let's just scale this up a little bit. So I'm going to move this over. And let's apply our rotation and scale. And so what I want to do is I want to spread some trees on this surface. All right, so let's say we had a couple different trees in here. So let's add maybe like... We'll say a couple birch trees right here. And then I'm going to move these up like this. And so let's move them all up for right now. Because what I want to show you is there's an option in here. If you select all of these, there's an option to snap them to ground. So what that's going to do is that's going to move them to ground so that the base of the trees intersects with the meshes right here. But these trees look kind of uniform. Right. So what we can do, though, is with these selected, there's an option here for, first of all, randomized variant. And so what randomized variant does is these trees all have different variants in the library. So there's different versions of the trees available um, so that when you place these, they don't all look the same. So notice how each one of these that I have selected is just randomly becoming another version of that tree. In addition, there's also options in here for random transform, which is going to rotate and scale your trees, as well as reset transform. And so reset transform is going to take those back to their original sizes. And so notice how when I select this, what this is doing is this is randomly rotating these trees and scaling them so that you get some randomization in here. All right, so I have a link to this add-on in the notes down below and on this page if you want to go check it out. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on. If you've tried it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.